Welcome to another segment of Provocative Conversations, destined to provoke further thought and spark greater questions regarding God, church, and the religious establishments of both the past and the present. I am the proud heretic, Mr. Provocateur himself. Hello, I am Mr. Provocateur, the ordained heretic, also known as the proud heretic. Proud, not necessarily to be a heretic to the definition of the church, yet at the same time, proud being the defined definition of a heretic in relation to the church. Why? Because I understand that Jesus was a heretic because it just simply a heretic just simply means one who goes against the establishments, against the norms that have been established, against the customs, against the customary ways, against the traditions of I go against the traditions of. Of the church. So, thank you for considering me as a heretic church. Continuing on, on the message that I began one recording ago, really all in connection and in relation to the prophetic utterances that God gave me pertaining to the church and its moving pieces. We can say the church and its moving pieces, the church system, the members of the church. You determine who you are. I'm just giving what God stated to me again. This is post election. So I am following up on the results of the election to come back and talk to the church and say, hey, because I know you all are sitting wounded like Jonah. Jonah was sent to Nineveh. Jonah did what he was supposed to do eventually. And then Jonah comes back and then God did not do what God said. Apparently he was going to do. So Jonah gets mad and God says, what are you mad at Jonah? And God says, Oh, I just got a revelation. Y'all. I just got a revelation. Oh man. That was a good one. Oh man. That's a good one. It's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Let me flow with that one. So God asked Jonah, Jonah, what's wrong with you, boy? Jonah say, you know what's wrong with me. God said, spit it out. Jonah say, I knew your tricking butt was going to tell me to go and tell them folk that did what you going to do. And then you wasn't going to do it. And then I was going to be sitting up here looking stupid. Now, y'all forgive my ac my ac just cut on i don't know why it cut on it's nearly winter now but anyway my ac cut on it's gonna make a little bit of noise but please understand that i have it on auto and it's on and i don't even know why it's on because it's pretty chilly outside but anyway on that last message that fire was going on in the background i guess it heated up the room (laughs) and now my ac is on automatic so it just cut on to try to cool down those embers we were feeling up in here it got hot up in here you know nelly had that song it's getting hot yeah it was it was hot now watch this here so now god says you're mad at me because i decided to spare the people who means everything to me that i've invested so much into how you gonna be mad at me here's the revelation i just got in this in these this little speech right here may i remember this god may i remember this here don't y'all go coining this and trying to snatch it from me but it is what it is i got proof on the recording that you know it was anyway you, y'all do what y'all want to do don't you, you give me the royalties or something on it but anyway i just got this revelation when i was talking to you all Just as Jonah was, oh my goodness, my goodness, 
let me find this here when I'm when I'm saying this here. Okay, I'm. It's just something I wanna find. All right, I'm there. Okay, I'm there. It's nothing that I'm reading or anything. It's just something that I want to. I want to add into my effects. Okay, from this revelation because this was nothing that I laid out. Just this quick, I got this revelation. Just as Jonah was upset with God because God chose to do a thing instead of doing a thing. Now, I ain't justifying the church. The church just missed it, okay? They missed it, and they were supposed to miss it. Why? Because God told me he was stripping the church of its influence. The church has lost its influence those of you all who hadn't heard the messages, hear the prophetic utterances and you will get an understanding of it. Do I claim to be a prophet? No. Do I claim to be a teacher? Yes. Do I claim to be a preacher? Yes and no. I have been ordained and licensed as a minister and an elder, but no longer do I preach or teach. Not because I was caught in some sin, but because I was caught up in the righteousness of God that pulled me from all of that. And now I am purer now than I ever was then, only because of my maturity level today than then. Not that I was in a bad state. I'm just saying so much further growth from that point in 2007 to now has occurred that I'm in a whole different place and space. So I didn't get sat down. I walked away. (laughs) so am I a prophet I don't consider myself a prophet but I will say this to you I hear God and I hear God clearly and what you hear from me for the most part comes from what I heard from God not just in the prophetic utterances but just in the teachings that I have alone which is why they're so earth shattering so earth shaking that's why they quake People quake when they hear some of the teachings that I have for me to speak about the sovereignty of God the way that I do. But God told me the foundation of every one of your messages should be on the salvation of me or not the salvation. (laughs) He said on the sovereignty of me, the sovereignty of me, God's sovereignty. I speak from the premise of his sovereignty. If your messages are coming about God, but they fail to come out of the premise of sovereignty, you are missing God throughout everything that you teach because everything you teach will be based upon Willie. Who the the hell hell is Willie? Man, y'all know Willie. That's that free, that's that free thing. What are you talking about? That Willie, that free thing. You know that free Willie. Oh, uh, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. Y'all got, see, see, uh, Free Willie is his AKA. She is AKA Free Willie, but really it's Free Will. <laughs> see, if all of your teachings come from the premise of Free Will, you've already missed God already. I don't need to, he- I don't even need to hear any more of your messaging. For the most part, but because of my maturity, I still understand that you can have some purity in your messages. But I I also know where your messages will always end up. They'll end up in one of two places. They'll end up one contradicting what you just stated in the opening of your message or regardless of what the opening of your message is, you will always conclude on the premise of free will, which will then taint the message. Or you would just end up missing it all together. You see what I'm saying? It's just the way it is. But anyway, so I'm not a prophet. God has not told me that. But you better believe that I see. I'm going to say this again. I see. I see. My family can vouch for this and those who know me can vouch for this, hopefully. And if they can't, that's on them. In order to see, you got to (laughs) see. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Now listen to this here. I am a teacher who sees and I am definitely a teacher who hears. 
And I hear when God speaks. I hear when God talks to me. And God talks to me often. Or, and remember, I have to say it like that. For those of you say, well, God don't talk. I don't know how else to say it. I do believe it's something deeper than that. So there is a type of right where you are. I just don't have the experience or the wording for it yet. In order to form the words, you have to form or the experience has to occur. I don't know how I get to experience what I don't control, but until I experience that experience that will give me a greater revelation or a greater set of words to express the deepness of what it means hearing from God. You don't have it either. We just don't have it. At least not right now. And maybe someone does. And maybe you do. I don't know. But I have to say that. See, you don't understand. You and God become so one. You don't know how to distinguish at certain points in a thing. You don't know how to tell when it's you and when it's God. Yes, you know that much. But then you don't. Just depends on how deep you are in that moment. Because you and God become so one that when you speak, God speaks. And when God speaks, you speak. And then you both speak without ever opening your mouths and saying anything. Y'all, listen, I'm only talking to, look, this is deep talking to deep. (laughs) This is iron sharpening iron. I'm rolling right now. Now, some of you all, you don't understand me because you don't understand the depth of me. My parents don't even understand the depth of me. Is that a rebuke? No, it's not necessarily a rebuke. But I just hope to God that I can understand my children when they go to rolling in the deep. Now, maybe I have one daughter who's rolling in the deep. And I sit and look at her. I'm like, how? Now, I got three boys. And I wanted my boys to pull with me. I wanted my boys. I got an 18-year-old. I have a 24-year-old. And I have a 33 or 34-year-old. And I wanted my boys to roll with me. Intellectually, they roll with me. Two of them, they exceed my intellect as far as book knowledge is concerned. Because I dropped out of high school. Though I did graduate from college, but I did drop out of high school. I'm a college graduate with no high school education. (laughs) That's a university major. But anyway, it is what it is. But I have a daughter who rolls where I wanted my sons to roll. This ain't got nothing to do with you, church, but it's got everything to do with you. Why? Because right now I hear I hear I hear baby cries. (laughs) You hear that? I keep. What's that? I don't understand. And then every time I cut on the internet, I keep hearing all this baby jibber jabber. What they trying to say? Wow. I don't know. I still ain't figured out what. Oh, shoot. That's the church. What's wrong with the church? Why they crying? (laughs) What's wrong? (laughs) What's the matter? What's the matter with the baby? Is the baby baby Mr. Pacifier? What's wrong? See, I had seven kids. And I know how to do that baby talk. What's your matter, baby? Is your, is your baby Miss your daddy? Huh? It's your, what's your matter? Who took her pacifier? Get her pet. Get the baby. She, she, she just won't. She just won't. Yeah. Yeah. Just, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I don't understand why the church. Oh my goodness, that's the church crying. Now, who done done the church wrong? Oh, 
that prophecy about President Tr- Oh, hell. Lord have mercy. No wonder the church on TV and on the internet making all that mumbo jumbo. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Lord Jesus. <laughs> Lord, laugh with me again, baby. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy, Lord. Have did he mercy. just say that? Yeah, he did. I mean, did he actually just say that? He said it. I heard him. I heard him. He said it. <laughs> said it lord jesus i don't know what's wrong with the church i don't know what's wrong with the church y'all but i do the church i got a message for you listen the church is wretched stank tricking conniving deceptive hate-filled political pharisaic rebellious unrepentant unsaved and unashamed Shame on you, church. Shame on you in all of your wretchedness. Wow, church. That was a lot to say. Hmm. Okay, so here we go. Church, we know that King Saul is no longer on the throne, even though he's still in position. You, church, Kenneth Copeland, your family, your now news station, talking about fake news, Lord have mercy. Your news station, your rhetoric, your ideologies that you all are spewing out there now, you all have now gone off of your rockers. I told you, Kenneth, all you got to do is look at your eyes. Something ain't right. I told y'all that. Oh, Lord, have mercy. So now the church is now in an anger mode. They're having an angry fit now. The church is upset. The church is angry. Somehow you thought that God was going to back your kings and he was going to keep. Remember Saul. Okay. Let's go. God chose your Saul, Donald Trump. But God also chose your David (laughs) in this situation, Joe Biden. Now, you say, Kenneth and all of you other church folks, you out there on the Internet saying stuff like this here. This ain't God didn't announce this. This this ain't announced the the, the president. The media announced the president. The media announced the president. What the hell you mean the media announced the president? Duh. 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 That's who always announced the president. The new president. Who won the election? The media. Dodos. Come on. Your mind is done going over into that new term. That whoop de whoop term. You just whoop de whoop. You just, church, y'all done lost it. Y'all done lost it. We always learn who. Oh, so the, the, the real president. Is supposed to come on the scene and announce who won, even if he lost. You crazy as all hell, church. Y'all keep changing the rules of the game. I remember when I was in Job Corps, Shink Job Corps, Pisca Forest, North Carolina, 1985. I'm in Job Corps and I was a spade master, so I thought I was. But I had good partners. I loved my Florida partners. I had Tampa partners. I had Palatka partners. I had a few Miami partners. And I had another one from Lakeland. And we were killing. I mean, we were killing Henry Gully, Lakeland, Florida. Killing people. 
folk who play spades and they start losing, they want to start changing the rules in the middle of the game. That's what you sitting up here doing, church. How you going to change the rules of the game? How you going to change the rule? It's not, it's not the media who announces the winner. So now, Kenneth Copeland, you got a video out there. Those of you all go out there, Google Kenneth Copeland laughing. You go out there and Google it. Kenneth Copeland is looking like a straight clown out on Instagram or is it whatever. It's on YouTube. Just go to YouTube. But it's also on Instagram and it's on that other one, that bird. I forgot that name. But anyway, that little Tweety Bird. Twitter. Twitter. There it is. Okay. He's out there laughing. <laughs> Biden is president. <laughs> I'm sitting up here like saying, what in the hell is going on in the church? What y'all done done? I told y'all in that last recording, get off that crack. I told y'all that crack is whack. But as we all see, Kenneth, you still on that thing. You lighting that thing up. You are under an illusion, and that crack has got you now delusional. Kenneth, they need to retire you. I know Bishop Blake, Charles E. Blake, from the West Angeles Church of God in Christ, the grand old church of God. This is the church of God in Christ. Ah, you can't join in. You got to be born in. This is the church. And he, even he retired. What are you doing? Y'all get Kenneth down from there. Y'all, he making y'all look bad. And then y'all looking just as kooky as him. You look in the audience and they all out. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what is the whole church y'all this man got millions and millions and millions of followers what is wrong craft low what you still doing up under that umbrella you know the bible do say how can two walk together except they be oh i hope you're not craft low i hope you're not that's some monked up stuff but anyway church listen Y'all done lost your mind. I don't know how y'all thought Donald was supposed to do this. Now, I'm going to try to finish this in this recording, okay, y'all? I don't want to go through another one, but I will if I have to. But I have some verses I want to give to you all, and I don't know if I'll be able to complete it. Let's see if I can complete it. So I'm going to have to skip some things. But, church, y'all got me hot. Y'all got me hot. I'm telling y'all, whenever I get hot, somebody in trouble. Now, you know, generally, I only feel that hotness. I only feel that hotness when... We're looking at John Hagen. You start hearing them, them embers in the background popping, and you feel that fire. Like I said, this would cut my AC on in here today. It made my AC cut on. I mean, it's on automatic, but it's pretty chilly outside. It's, it's getting into winter. But somehow the AC cut on when I started playing this one right here. You hear that? That's them embers. Now, the AC got me cold, but this fire kind of warmed me up now. But somehow, church, you thought that y'all and Donald was going to be creating all that hell you hear in the background. And somehow God was going to establish his kingdom through you all, huh? Somehow that crack pipe done got y'all thinking that right and wrong don't matter. It's getting hot now. Right and wrong don't matter with God. That it don't matter whether you right or wrong, whether you're just or unjust, whether justice is important or not. But let me tell you what God said, which is why I knew he was going to have to leave off the kingdom. Remember, I said on October the 26th, 2020, God said this to me. He said this season is distinguishing between the right of the matter and the wrong of the matter. He says this season is putting a distinguishing divide between right 
and wrong. Now, how in the hell was that divide supposed to come with Donald Trump in office? Come on, y'all. <sighs> Between what is just and what is unjust. God says, I will make a distinguishment. I will bring clarity in justice. How was that supposed to happen with Trump? With William Barr? Come on, y'all. Put that pipe down. Crack is whack. This is a seed, especially that spiritual, that religious crack. Lord have mercy. This is a season where justice will receive its just due. Justice in this season will receive its due, God says. Justice will prevail in this season. Justice will be the prevailing force in this season. He says, I will write the things that are not correct. I will correct the uncorrected. Uh-oh. I will correct the things that are not correct. I will correct the things that were overlooked. He says, trust that this season will go as I have spoken to you. He says, it will go just as I have spoken to you. It will be just as I have spoken it to be. You will see it just as I have spoken it to you. Well, by God telling me all of that, I knew what was apparently getting ready to happen. So, when I look at all that God was saying, I realized what direction God was apparently going. Well, I came to understand the direction that he was going to take. So here we are right now. We're in that direction. We now know what we know. We have John Hagee Jr. out there on the Internet saying all kind of crazy stuff. John Hagee Jr., that's Hagee Jr. You all look him up. You probably have seen him out there on that Internet. But he says something today. He says something's wrong when it doesn't take a lot of effort to fill the streets with protesters. But you have to beg and plead to fill a church with prayer warriors. John Hagee Jr., you young bottle sucking little boy. <laughs> you a little boy. All you did was picked up your daddies and your granddaddies and all their preaching. You're preaching from the era that you migrated from. You all have nerves being of Mexican descent. And yet you all are sitting there. In the Mexican field area, San Antonio, I've been to your church several times when I went out there to see a few of my kids who were in that area at the time at Fort Sam. And I've also been at your church not to go in, but to just look at it and I guess admire it or whatever, inquire of it or whatever. During Hurricane Katrina. I was working with the Red Cross and I was sent out there for a period of time for all of those evacuees who were sent to San Antonio at Kistler Air Base and a couple of the other air bases there. I went there to see you all then. You all are filled with Mexicans and you all are standing with a president who's removing Mexicans, building walls. You all are some twisted folk. Now you trying to wonder why the streets are more filled with protesters than your church is filled with prayer warriors. Well, if praying looks anything like what Paula White was standing up there in the pool pit doing, a gooba dabba dibba dabba dooba gabba dead. Africa is Africa is the one with the biggest angels, and we want the biggest angels to come. Africa come. Africa come. I was like, abracadabra, 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 abracadabra. It's like, what the hell? Honestly, think about it. Ethiopia been struggling with, with starvation for years and years and years. It's ever since I was a little boy. I remember my mom and daddy, they adopted 
a child. That was a money scheme. Adopted a child and, and they, I guess, promised to feed the child or send money over there monthly or however that went. Here today, it's like Jesus said, you're going to always have the poor with you. Because <laughs> them Ethiopians ain't gained a pound yet. And I feel sorry for them. But Paula, you got nerves to be calling on Africa to pull the angels from over there to over here. I think what it sounded like she was saying, y'all, was saying, look here, Africa, we know where these niggers came from. We know where these blackies came from. We know where these anarchists, <laughs> we know where these anti-Trumpers where these looters, these rebels, these black lawless ones, where these hood rats came from. These y'all demons, Africa, we calling y'all over here. We commanding y'all to bring y'all black behinds over here. You and all your angelic powers. Get over here to this divided states of our stolen America built on the blacks of your wretched people, Africa. Your broke people, Africa. Your nation stripped people, Africa. Get over here and get these mango lovers, these coconut crackers. <laughs> I ain't talking about crack white folk, y'all. Coconut crackers. You got to cra see if you lived in Florida, you understand. People come from the islands. They'll climb up in a coconut tree when I was growing up in Florida. And they'll climb up that doggone crooked tree, pull that coconut down or knock that coconut down to the ground, get out of that tree, barefooted, crawl up that tree, barefooted, crawl back down that tree, get on that ground and get a rock or a hammer or whatever and crack that coconut open and peel that coconut and put a, get a nail and put a hole in the three eyes of that coconut and suck that juice right out, then crack that coconut, break it open and eat that thing. Listen, I grew up in South Florida for real, okay? So I know. So you better come get these coconut lovers, these mango lovers, and do something with them, Africa. That's why I believe she was calling over there. Come get your people. We don't know how to deal with them. We can't even deal with our European ones. <laughs> Lord Jesus, it's still the truth, though. I ain't worried it's still the truth. But anyway, if prayer Hagee looks like anything like we saw on the Internet, y'all go look at it. If prayer looks like anything Paula White got going on or a prayer is Lily White, like the Copeland's news station got going on that they've been doing, that his daughter and all of them been doing, if, if that's what prayer looks like, I understand why there's more people on the streets. I ain't even hit them streets yet, but I'm I'm almost contemplating going out on them streets now. Shoot, if that's what prayer look like, I understand why your house is empty, boy. So anyway, he just all twisted. He just he just he's just up the crack of his ancestors. You know, they all he's like fifth, sixth, seventh generation preachers. <laughs> dumb. Anyway, I ain't saying you dumb. I ain't saying you ain't dumb either, though. But anyway. He says, something's, wait a minute, wait a minute, let me get, go back to that. Protesters, protesters, listen to this, listen to what he said. Protesters, protesters, protesters. You put prayer versus protesting. Lord, have mercy. Didn't, didn't the Bible says a prayer is like a sacrifice, okay? Prayer is like a sacrifice. It's like worship, it's like sacrifice. The Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. And obedience in this season is what Jesus said. Go out there and visit the poor, the sick, the downtrodden, those who are in need, those who are less fortunate, those where justice and righteousness has not been established on their account. Well, I understand why they chose protesting over that mess that you call prayer. 
Again, I say, people, I speak from the premise of sovereignty. When you speak from from the premise of sovereignty, it does not even leave space for what we call prayer. (laughs) Sovereignty does not leave space for prayer. And don't even say what the Bible say Jesus went up to pray. Well, first of all, we don't know what he went up there and did unless we were standing right beside him and heard what he was saying or doing. We don't know what he did. People call prayer anything, but for the most part, the day we call prayer saying, oh, God, I'm going to quote your word back to you because I'm going to hold you to this here like we're in the court of law. We're in the court of heaven. Did you not say, God, that the just shall live by faith? Did you not say, God, that I could say to this mountain and be thou removed? And now, God, are you telling me I cannot say that and it shall not happen? Well, I'm going to hold you to it in this court of law, God. You will do this. You shall do that. You shall not do this. You shall do this here. And I shall be blessed and not cursed. And I shall not go through this. And I shall not go. What the? Who the? Who is God? You are God. Who's sovereign? You are God. We done got this all chopped up. This that chopped and screwed stuff. What is you doing? Prayer ain't nothing but a bunch of, I'm going to say it, y'all, it's a bunch of whoop de whoop I don't even know what that is. God's saying, what is they doing down there? And what is she calling Africa for? He looked over at Jesus and said, Jesus, did you teach her that down there? He said, no. In fact, I told him, this ain't even my home. I told her, if I needed to call some angels, I could call them, but I don't even need to call them. God said, well, did you tell her why you didn't need to call them? He said, well, she's supposed to know. She's supposed to know that you're sovereign. She's supposed to know what your will is. She's supposed to know that Biden was chosen by you. She's supposed to know that Trump's day is over. She's supposed to know that he was nothing more than a, a vessel more of a vessel of dishonor, but he was a vessel. God says he chooses a vessel of honor and a vessel of dishonor. He was, you know, he had a messy position. I feel sorry for you, Trump. I felt sorry for Job, but I can't put Job in this one because you ain't equivalent to Job. I felt sorry for Judas. That boy had a hard assignment. I feel sorry for Pharaoh. That boy ain't never took swimming lessons. He ain't never thought for a million years, even though he ain't lived no million years, he ain't never thought for a million years that he was going to have to swim across that Red Sea. I feel sorry for him. He had a tough assignment. I mean, the least God could have done is taught the man how to swim. Or when they went running after the children of Israel, at least bring a life jacket. I mean, I don't don't know what to tell you. Teach the horses how to swim. They could have swam back. I don't know. Those are hard assignments. I I can't explain them all. All I know is, church, you should have known that Trump wasn't going to be established. But you didn't know, and that's understandable. So now we're going to go on from here. Now, Hager Jr. also said this here, because I got to read this stuff. Okay, not this, but what I'm going to. Something's wrong when the word of God is censored as hate speech and public officials can blatantly lie and be called servants. Wait a minute, wait a minute. First of all, public officials are servants. In fact, Jesus is insinuated or literally stated in the scriptures that we're all servants. What are you talking about? Jesus came to serve. (laughs) What are you talking about? Yes, they're servants. That's all they are, are servants. And then you say, and public officials can blatantly lie. Are you talking about Daddy Trump? Are you talking about King Trump? Are you talking about the modern day 2020 King Cyrus in Donald Trump? Because that's the one who blatantly lies. That's the one who lies and lies and lies and lies. And Paula White still comes and lays hand on him. (laughs) Is that why he's lying? Because that transfer of spirits from the church on him? I don't know, but I just know he lied more now than he ever did. And the church is closer to him more now than they ever. Oh, shook and nook. Watch this here. 
He says, something's wrong with the word of God is censored as hate speech. Let me tell you something. The word of God, listen, listen. The words that man spoke in regards to their preconceptions of God, they are hate speech. That's why you don't like homosexuality. You don't like lesbianism. You don't like who you don't like. You don't like Democrats. You don't like the way justice looks. You don't like the way righteousness looks as it's being established in an unestablished state. (laughs) <laughs> you don't like the way change looks church because it doesn't look like your systems. It doesn't look like the systemic issues and blueprint of your systems. <laughs> so it is hate speech because the Bible has become nothing but hate speech to people. And it has been that it not has become. It always was. Remember there were haters to the change during King James's rule, there were Catholic haters, haters within the elites, the elite religious folks of that time period who were chosen by whoever to actually write the Bible or transcribe or whatever you want to call it to put it in a book. So how did these haters in some form of love put out all that is without bleeding in their own hate? Don't tell me it's not hate to say slaves obey your masters and you better not seek to be loose. That's hate speech. What is you talking about? <laughs> Lord, we some twisted up people. And then she said, something's wrong when we can murder unborn children and call it health care. What is you talking about? Something is wrong when you shoot a black man seven times in the back and call it self-defense. When you can shoot a man running and then go and kick him and step on him and call it justice. No, see, y'all church, y'all on some straight crack. Y'all on some bad stuff. Y'all got that weed laced with doo-doo juice. You've been sticking your weed in doo-doo juice. That's that's some messed up stuff. Because that doo-doo juice had to go through bowels. It had to go through the coal, and it went through a bunch of junk. Y'all on some bad stuff. You get your weed is laced with doo doo. Church, you are in a bad, wretched state. All right, I done said enough of that one. I ain't bringing Hagee up no more. Hagee, Hagee Senior. I don't know where yet. I don't know how you're doing. I don't know how your lungs are doing, but it is what it is. So here we go. We're gonna start reading. Listen. This is the reason why Trump could not be president. Number one, because God was after equality. God is concerned with foreigners. God is tired of, I don't don't know, I I can't say God is tired of anything because God assigns how things go and all in his sovereignty. So I won't say that, but God is dealing with rebellion. God is dealing with the blindness of his people. God ain't changing prophecy. God didn't change no prophecy. Okay. I know second Kings chapter 20 talks about something like that. That's listen. God ain't changing. No problem. God ain't saying something and doing something different. Come on y'all. That ain't how that work. Even that situation with Jonah and Nineveh. Did God really say if, if they don't repent, I'm going to do this here. No, but that does follow the, the line of hell. If you want to put that, because then it'll say, see, if you don't do right, then God's going to send you to hell. See, God want to save you, but you don't do right. You go to hell. It all plays in the same. Where's the hell at? We don't know where it's at. We just know it's there. Yeah. Who who said it? Y'all said it. Y'all said it. Again, people go, go look up S H E O L. Go look up G E H E N N A. Shield Gehenna. 
Look up H A D E S. Look up Tartarus, but don't get too deep on that. T A R T A R A S or U S, Tartarus, whatever. And look up, of course, Hades again. Listen, you all. Stop being afraid of hell. This ain't my message on hell. But listen, I don't teach from the premise of hell because there is no hell. If there's a hell, why in the hell God got all these hell raisers called the church still here on earth and, and not in hell? Everybody else going to hell but them. He <laughs> did some twisted stuff. Uh, Remember, everybody else will be in chains on earth but them. <laughs> uh oh, you got a point there, preacher. You got a point there. I know I do. Anyway, God is about justice and right judgment. God is establishing equal living, equal living pay, equal hiring, equality in the health care system, equality in the housing system, equality in justice, equality in education. Let me go back to what Hagen Jr. said as well. Hagen Jr. said something that just twisted my my saccharoo. <laughs> He just not said, or he said in that reading, this man said about death or baby, baby, baby caring about babies. How are you going to talk about caring about babies when we just had 200? We have right now legally 240 plus thousand people dead in this divided states of stolen America. And the church is happy with that. And the church is still upholding the hands of the murderer or the one who is who is in a position to change the murdering. How are you church going to herald for a president? We got to he stood up for us, y'all. He stood for us. Now we got to stand for him. How are you going to stand up for somebody who just put who just who could have, he could have instituted at least the position itself could have. The position that he holds could have instituted rules and guidelines that would have kept that lady's mama living, that man's daddy from dying, that girl's sister, that lady's son, her daughter, that grandmother's daughter, that grandmother's grandchildren, those grandchildren's grandmother, their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their partners. What is you talking about? What is you talking about saving something that you don't even know or whatever about a fetus? You arguing over a fetus when you got grown. Lord, I'm going to say it right now. You arguing over some fleshy flesh in a womb that you can't do nothing for necessarily. And you overlooking all the deaths of grown ass people out here on these streets dying from this virus. Church, you are one wretched, one minded beast and you do not need to rule in the kingdom of man. Church, you are a dangerous entity. That's why God is neutering you. He's cutting your sack off. You will be neutered. You will not continue to reproduce of your kind. You're being spiritually neutered. God then went past the circumcision. <laughs> he going to the straight neutering. Take it all. <laughs> That, that must hurt. That must hurt. Well, that's what God is doing. So, you know, I can't even get mad at you too bad, church, because it must hurt. Like I just said, we some twisted up people like God don't care about all these people dying from this virus. Now, you mad at a man who does care about the lives that are being lost and who's coming on the scene to do something. And you're saying he stole the votes. It's not right. It's rigged. The fake media, they play with the balance. They did. And they did. Didn't your Bible say that it was God who sets up a king and puts down a king? It wasn't no ballots. It wasn't the people's votes. That's the illusion, people. God is sovereign. God is the one who sets up one. You can put whatever you want on that voting card. 
even if you didn't put the right thing, God could change it. <laughs> Why? You don't know what your voting card went in as. And even if you know what it went in as, you don't know how it registered. Why? Because if, if, if God changes a thing in the midst of a thing, how would you even know it? You would never know. Most of you, your vote don't, I ain't going to mess with Yeah. Most of you, your vote don't even count like that. All right. Just look at your electoral map. Okay. But anyway, uh, it's, it's deeper than that though. But then we go on to the sovereignty and I ain't trying to get that right now. So we're going to go on from there. But the bottom line is God has someone now who will bring what God is establishing and he will make matter what matters to God. So here we go. I already told you about that lying spirit. Okay. Listen, there's another verse in the Bible that speaks about a seducing spirit, a conflict. Cause you all are looking at the Democrats as though they, they, they're causing confusion and division. And, you know, we know the Bible said there's a verse in the Bible that said, God is not the author of confusion and division. Yet I could bring you to verses where God did create conflict. And as a matter of fact, listen to this one. This is in judges nine. Verses 22 and 23, it says, after Abimelech had ruled over Israel for three years, God sent a spirit. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. It didn't say the devil came. It says God sent a spirit that stirred up trouble. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You just not told me that God does not create conflict. Let me see what it says. God sent a spirit that stirred up conflict or trouble between Abimelech and the leading citizens of Shechem and they revolted. Oh my goodness. There is a verse, in, I mean, there is a message that God said to me about the election. I think it was back in July. God said to me that there will be a revolt due to the results of the election. A revolt will occur and it will occur around the world. He said the universe will revolt. So you will begin to see a revolt people around the world. Look at different elections. Look at what people are doing toward their government. Now that the United States has moved the way that it has moved. But watch what happens here in this divided States of America. Watch what happens here. But it says God did that. God stirred that up. What are you talking about? God is not the author of confusion and division. See, God's motive may not be the very motive that yours is, but God is known for stirring up confusion. He's done that throughout the Old Testament. Y'all don't understand all those battles that was claimed to be won. All y'all like is the bloodshed part of it, church. Y'all just want to have that in your back pocket so you can use it anytime you want to pull your guns and bullets out like y'all getting ready to do. Now, don't get it wrong. It ain't like folk on that other side don't got no bullets either. You know, I mean, that Second Amendment belongs to us all. Watch how you're stepping. But I do declare y'all got some of the better weaponry. Anyway, let's go ahead on. God says there'll come a time that people will have itchy ears. So many people gravitated to what you were saying, church, because they wanted to hear what you all were hearing. And people were feeding you all prophecies that you wanted to hear as well. There were people coming on the scene just and just out of everywhere. Talking about the Lord told me and y'all white folks were so happy that black folks was having revelations or, or whatever about Trump being president and all these dreams people have. And y'all better be careful with these dreams. Y'all better be careful. You know, I mean, you go to bed on some bad gastrointestinal stuff going on, boy. You you be done had all kind of dreams. Y'all need to watch that. Y'all need to watch them dreams. You done sat here and looked at all Friday the thirteenth. All twenty seven of them. You done looked at all chainsaw massacres. Cause you know, it's just Halloween and stuff. And then y'all going to wake up the next morning talking about I had a dream. That I saw the head of the Democrats cut off. <laughs> 
you saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. Thing monk you up, got all up in your psyche. Now you talking about, I saw a chainsaw in my spirit last night when I was asleep, cutting off the head of the Democratic Party. I saw the Vice President Joe Biden's head sat on a platter. What is you talking about? Why can't we go to the running car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, watch this here. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, God says this, or the Bible says this here. God ain't, damn. anyway, I'm, this is why I don't mess with it no more, y'all. But I, but, I, but I know it now. Don't y'all get me wrong now. I knows it. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Jesus Christ, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set up his kingdom. He says, preach the word of God. He says, be prepared whether the time is favorable or not. Now, I'm going to tell you this here. I knew it wasn't favorable for me to be saying Donald Trump was going to lose. But I had to tell what God told me. It's out there, y'all. And anybody who knows me know I've been saying it for months and months. Who's going to don't worry. My family didn't even believe me. Don't worry about now. My household did. My spouse did. My children did. They believed me or at least they tell me they believe me. <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, he says, patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people to good teaching. He says here, for the time, a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. People say, yeah, and that's why we ain't listening to you because you, you and that you ain't got that sound and wholesome teaching. Well, it all depends on what you consider sound and wholesome. If you're talking about your religion, if you're talking about your oral traditions, if you're talking about a God who's going to come back and send most of us to hell and burn us up and sit up and sing love songs for the rest of eternity, you crazy as all hell. But that I wouldn't even send my worst demons to this place if I were God? Wow, what a loving God you have. But whatever, I'll accept you gladly. Bring your own ice, because there won't be any refrigerators here. <laughs> <laughs> okay he says they will follow their own desires and will look for teachers or look for people who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear so and then it says they will reject the truth and chase out the myths i think the church was was rejecting the truth of what was going to occur and they were chasing after myths just like their hell teaching, that's a bunch of myths. Their Satan teaching, that's a bunch of myths. Notice they bought all these guns and bullets, but yet they say we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then church, why the hell you brought all them guns and bullets? Kenneth Copeland, I heard him on a message today saying, you know, I love the people, but those demons, what is you talking about? That's why you bought the guns and bullets for the demons? Come on, man. I think riding on an airplane with those, oh, the devils would just jump all over you if I did that on a public airplane. Oh, yeah? So is it the people? No, it's not the people. I love the well, Why the devil's on the plane? Because they're trying to travel from one region of the world to the next. No, they on the plane because we know, church, where demons reside inside of people. At least that's what y'all teach us. At least that's what y'all tried to show with Jesus. And demons don't obviously want to walk around an area the way y'all wrote the Bible. You show it where it's in people. And even if it comes out of people, it wants to go into something else. So why in the hell is you trying to say demons was just getting on an airplane? I wasn't talking about the people. I was talking about the demons. Kenneth Copeland, cut it out, man. Dog, going to go on to glory land. Hallelujah. Glory. Man, let us live. I can't breathe. Anyway. So now we're in a position where all y'all wanted to hear church was what y'all heard. And that's why y'all heard what y'all heard. 
Y'all got just what y'all wanted to hear. Remember, even when the seducing spirit and all that, it was that the people didn't want to hear the true prophets. They only wanted to hear the lie. And so that's what they ended up hearing. Be careful with what you want to hear because you might just hear that. Now you are embarrassed, church. Now the president is embarrassed. Now you have lost credibility with the world and within the, your own entity. Church, you are a failed entity. You are a failed system. And you and every other system that you designed and controlled throughout this world, church, is coming to its corrupted end and you keep saying god exposed corruption that's what he's doing church that's why joe biden won that's why you and trump looking real crooked right now he's doing exactly what you're saying you better watch what you praying for because it's happening church boy you right whatsoever you ask in his name it shall be given oh Y'all done called up them African spirits, Paula. They, oh, y'all better send them back. <laughs> y'all better send them back. They ain't on y'all behalf. Listen, somehow you all thought that God was going to set up a Donald Trump forever and a ever in a day church when you don't give a damn about foreigners, people who come from other nations and other places. People who are oppressed and beaten and slaughtered for no reason whatsoever. You know how y'all came over here and did these engines. You know how y'all came over here and did these, did these Negroes, these Negros, these Okras, these Negros. Y'all know what y'all did. Listen, this is what Exodus 12 and 49 says. It says, the same instructions apply to native born Israelites as well as foreigners. Watch this one in Leviticus 24 and 22. It says the same rule applies to every one of you. It makes no difference whether you are a foreigner or an Israelite because I am your God. What God was saying there, it don't even matter what he was saying before that. It's the principle and what he's saying in that. And the, what he's saying in that is when you apply instructions, it applies to the natural born Americans and those who were born abroad. God says, because you serve me and because you come from my loins, you do what I do. So in doing what I do, the same rule applies to everybody. It makes no difference whether you are a foreigner or you an American. And somehow, church, you and your wretchedness and your wretched soul, Donald Trump, you all determine that you would make who you want to make and you would do what you want to do. And you would allow who you want to allow. And you began to oppress the foreigner. You began to set up rules and regulations for everybody who don't look like you, who doesn't have the bloodline as you, even though the Bible says in Acts, we're all of one blood. <laughs> Church, you are wretched. You are wretched. In Exodus 22 and 21, and all of these are in the God's word translation right now. But in Exodus 22 and 21, it says, never mistreat or oppress foreigners. Wait a minute. That's all you all did with these children, their parents. That's all you did with those who were coming from certain regions of Africa. That's all you all did from those who were coming from these Muslim nations. Church, you violated all your scriptures and your King Saul did as well. He carried out your wretched plans in Leviticus chapter 19 verses 33 and 34. It says, never mistreat a foreigner living in your land. Oh, you know how y'all done, done these folks over here? 
coming with your ICE program and arresting all these people in the middle of the night, going to the schools, going to everywhere you could to grab hold of these people when they were trying to make a living and escape just like you all escaped. Israel, you all should know something about escaping because the Bible talks all about it that you all were foreigners, you were sojourners in the land and you were strangers at one time yourself. In fact, in Exodus 22 and 21, the next part of that, when it says never mistreat or oppress foreigners, it tells you why you're not supposed to do it. It says because you were foreigners living in Egypt at one time, you silly rascals. Your father Abraham left the land of the Chaldeans or went into the land, whatever, whatever. But anyway, he wasn't where he left from. Or he wasn't where he ended up. He wasn't from where he ended up. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 33 and 34, again, it says, never mistreat a foreigner in your land. Well, how y'all going to stay in God and stay right and y'all were doing all y'all were doing, church? He says, foreigners living among you will be like your own people. We have not been treating them like they're our own people, America. Now, don't get it wrong. Y'all do go into black households and snatch kids from their parents for all kind of dumb reasons. But you let the them other ones keep theirs. But y'all come and tear up. You've been doing that since slavery. You've been doing that since you went to Africa and started pulling people away. It's in your DNA to pull people away from people to break up families. And that's just what you all did in this president's rule. He says, foreigners living among you will be like your own people. He says, love them as you love yourself. You wouldn't send your own lily white self back over to Europe. Don't send them back to where they came from because you, this is what your Bible say right here, because you were foreigners living in Egypt as well. He said, I'm I'm your God. Now remember who I am now, okay? You both be like me on this earth, all right? Now, I ain't got nothing against y'all white folks, y'all lily white folks. Or, you know, I ain't got nothing against that. I'm just making a point. Please understand that I'm making a point. We're going back to the roots of this here. I don't blame y'all for what your ancestors did. But then don't blame me for what maybe one of my ancestors did as well. I'm in love with y'all. I think y'all some cool people. I like y'all. I like y'all. Some of you hard to like. And, and I tell y'all, you know, some of us black folks, we hard to like. Okay. All right, let's keep on going. Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm I'm moving fast, y'all, because I want to get this over with. Not because I want to get y'all out of my face, but I just want to give y'all and hurry up and give this to you, okay? In Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 17 through 19, it says this. The Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords. He's the great, powerful, and awe-inspiring God. He never plays favorites and never takes a bribe. Well, we know y'all play favorites and y'all take bribes. It says he makes sure orphans and widows receive justice. What y'all doing for them kids who sit in them, them doggone camps as orphans right now? You can't find them 500 something kids, parents. Where y'all trying to get them justice? That says that your Bible says that's what God does. He makes sure orphans and widows receive justice. What y'all doing for the widows of these men y'all and kill out there on these streets, America? You police officer, you shooting people every kind of way. What you doing for their, for their widows? I didn't ask what Loader Dollar is doing. Loader Dollar is what y'all call GoFundMe, Loader Dollar. I ain't saying what Loader Dollar doing. I'm asking what are you all doing, okay? What are you doing? You owe them people. You took, verse 10 says, so you should love foreigners, Because you were foreigners. He keeps saying, you better remember who you were. In Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 3, it says, this is what the Lord says. Judge fairly and do what is right. Well, right there alone, we knew Trump couldn't stay in office. He ain't judging fairly and doing what's right. He said, rescue those who have been robbed from those who oppressed them. Y'all were letting rich folk rob us left and right on the, in the workplace, in the health place, in the education system, in every type system there was, in the loan offices, in the bank. Y'all were just letting them do whatever they wanted to us. And y'all did not care. It says rescue those who have been robbed from those who oppress them. The Bible says it's the rich who oppress us. 
Don't mistreat foreigners, orphans, or widows, and don't oppress them. Don't mistreat them and don't oppress them. And you were doing just that, taking their jobs away, snatching the, the breadwinner out the house and sending him back to wherever he came from and leaving that family there like that. You caused oppression and you mistreated them. It says, don't kill innocent people in this place. Do you know how many innocent people were killed on these streets by you all? Damn to the hell, those who are killing each other. That's a whole nother story, a whole nother subject, a whole nother matter. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the legality and the illegality. We're talking about the justice and the injustice. We're talking about it on a certain level to a certain people right now. Because what's at stake and what this message is for and to is the president to the church, and we're talking regarding the president, their King Cyrus, their King Saul, who is in a position where he should have been doing something different. And the church's arms were operating through him. So I'm showing about him and those in authority up under him. These other people will deal with that when we go to individual issues and, and issues of the community and whatever else. Now, there's another area that that I want to deal with, just weights and balances. I'm moving. I'm going to probably be another 20 minutes or maybe 25 minutes, but that's just what this got to be because I want to finish this out in this one. Just weights and balances. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1, just weights and balance meaning give people justice. You know how you go into the grocery store and they sell a pound of hamburger meat, but really it's only like, Two thirds hamburger meat and the rest of it is nothing but fat junk. A half a pound of hamburger meat is hamburger meat and the other half is just fat and they just chopped it all up in there. And you you look because, you know, meat departments get bonuses and extra money if they can sell a certain amount of their fat as meat. Mm hmm. You talking about, well, that's to help us. They ain't to help y'all. They're stealing from you all. They're charging you for two pounds of meat, but they only gave you three fourths of a pound of meat, and the rest was a pound and, and a fourth of fat. But see, some of you all, you've been dealing with that for so long. Now, it they good. Yeah, see, you just, you just, you, you just need Jesus. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 1 in the Amplified Version of the Bible, it says it like this It says, A false balance. And unrighteous dealings are extremely offensive and shamefully sinful to God. He says, but a just weight is his delight. In other words, he's saying dealing honestly and dealing right, dealing justly. He said, that's my delight. But he's saying, you all are not showing me any delight. You are living shamefully. Church, you have lived shamefully. You didn't care about just weights. You didn't care about balance. You all just wanted your tax exempt status. You want to preserve your riches. You wanted to become richer and richer and richer and richer. And you didn't care about anybody else. You were happy that you got Donald Trump because he was going to protect your riches. You're wrong because you charge us more taxes than he as a billionaire has paid. You would charge us that many taxes in two, three months or two or three paychecks, $750. But then you would go ahead on a billionaire. You would charge $750 and us, you would take out in a year, $15,000, $20,000. What are you doing? Where's the where's the exact balance in that? Where's the just weight in that? Do you even care about what God delights in church? He said that's extremely offensive and shamefully sinful to deal with unrighteousness and false balances. In Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 13 through 15, I'm in the New Living Translation. Just listen to what it says. You can write it down later. You must use accurate scales when you weigh out merchandise. Man, we never operated on accurate scales, just weights and balances. He says, and you must use full and honest 
measures. When have we honestly, church, when have you in Donald Trump's four years measured out honesty, full honesty in just measure? Never have you done it. Yes, always use honest weights and measures so that you may enjoy a long life in the land your God has given you. Well, no wonder he didn't have but a short reign. You didn't use honest weights and measures. He says, all who cheat with dishonest weights. Well, that's you, church. That's your president, church. All who cheat with dishonest weights and measures are detestable to the Lord. Well, no wonder you had to get up out of here. It says in Leviticus chapter 19, verses 35 and 36, it says, do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or volume. He says your scales and weights must be accurate. We've never cared anything about accuracy in these last four years. I'm going to only hold you responsible right now, church, for the last four years up to the current. Your containers for measuring dry materials and liquid must be accurate. I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Remember who you serve. And he's basically saying in Proverbs chapter 16, verses 11 and 12, it says the Lord demands accurate scales and balances. Accurate. He demands it. He sets the standard for fairness. Oh, so the church don't set the standard for fairness. Oh, so the president nor the, oh, they don't set the standard for, so why were they doing it? And look at what it says here. Look at, look at, in verse 12 of Proverbs 16, it says, a king detests, hates, despises, wrongdoing for his rule is built on justice now when the hell has donald trump ever detested doing wrong church so what in the hell are you promoting him for why are you sitting around crying like a little whining i want to say a whining stop it right now you know <laughs> but why are you crying walking around here on the internet all on the internet won't let me get get some just just go out there on the internet and see some interesting stuff out there or pick up some 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 something that you know whatever why i got to sit and listen to all your <laughs> It is funny. It is funny. Why am I listening to all your whiny poops? I'm sick of your whines. What are you crying for? It says a king detests wrongdoing. Your king of your choice was not detesting wrongdoing. He fought the wrongdoing that he was doing. He, he made right, wrong, and wrong, right. When God is in the midst of making right, right, and wrong, wrong. What are you doing, church? Don't you understand you're arguing against yourself? Oh, it looks like I'm going to have to slow this down and back up out of this one and begin another one because I'm not finished. So let's move out of this one. Let's go into the next one and we'll complete it in that one, which would be part 16. We'll finish it in 16. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for the next one or the next recording of this same topic. Thank you.